it's quite weird, isn't it? <laughs> like, take a seat, put your headphones on. Is that that weird eating thing? Or is that that weird like noises thing? Or is that that sex thing? We have the weirdest conversations whilst you're asleep. I worry about your dreams. Like this is to all streamers out there. Mm -hmm. You do not need <laughs> more things. They are not gonna make you a better streamer. <laughs> My name is Ruby True, and this is my favorite interview on The Citadel. Hi, everybody. Uh, this is Ivy, and this is the favorite interview on The Citadel. I am super excited about our guest today. Uh, this is Ruby True. She is an ASMR artist on Twitch. Uh, and Ruby, can you please tell people watching what is ASMR? Because I know a lot of people hear about it, but not many people know what it is. Okay. So ASMR, most people be like, is that that weird eating thing? Or is that that weird like noises thing? Or is that that sex thing? Like that's the normal like reaction if people have heard about it. Or if people haven't heard about it at all, they just don't know at all. All of those things are not. So ASMR is a autonomous sensory meridian response and it's the reaction to the sounds. And as an ASMR artist, it's me that's trying to make sounds that people have like a... Um, some people say euphoric, some people say tingling, some people say it's just super relaxing. Um, you know, say if you listen to rain sounds before you go to bed, or if you just love the sound of like someone turning pages, or you really love someone's voice like Bob Ross. Um, so ASMR in its purest form is for relaxation, is for the tingles, people find it helps with anxiety and stress. And then like everything on the internet, if it exists, it has all these like other <laughs> branches, which is what the media grabs onto. The media will always grab onto the weirdest thing they can find, which is like mukbang ASMR, like the sounds of someone eating the weirdest things. And, you know, someone maybe overtly sexualizing it, you know, but I am fine with everyone doing their own thing and enjoying it. But when someone says they do ASMR, like most people, I would say like 90% of ASMR is just the relaxing kind. And sometimes people make role plays. I love making role plays. Humans in the best shape possible. We want to make you look fabulous today. Whilst visiting the Future Spa, we can fit you with a microchip. This microchip does not trace your whereabouts. I promise. And then people are like, ooh, role plays. And I'm like, <laughs> no. I mean, <laughs> not people, kind of role plays. people these days tend to sexualize pretty much everything. I mean, I feel like no matter what you do, there will be someone who can sexualize it. But I feel like yeah. ASMR gets it probably the most. Um, I think, yeah, I think because it's a very intimate thing as well, and I will agree it's a very intimate thing, but like my aim of being intimate, like because you're whispering, it's very low sounds, a lot of it is whispering, and a lot of it is very close to the mic, and it, most ASMR will be recorded on a left and right, so it's like if I was sitting here making a sound here, you'd hear it on that side of your headphone, and then that side of your headphone. Um, so it can be kind of intimate, but I think that's where... The tingles come from from a lot of people because a lot of people are like oh I really like your soft voice and it reminds me of when someone was reading to me or you know when you want to fall asleep to like the tv but yeah people with someone's voice is a little too jarring but then you find the right voice and then just imagine that but bringing it down into the perfect place just so they're like in your headphones whispering with you and like at first I was scared to talk too much when I started doing ASMR, but now I've realized like my voice is just as much part of it and people enjoy that part. People really like falling asleep to me, talking random stuff, talking about aliens, cows on my roof. Um, you know, people are like, aren't ASMR streams boring? I'm like, we have the weirdest conversations whilst you're asleep. I worry about your dreams.
like people fall asleep listening to me i'm just like speaking of your streams because i lurk on ruby's asmr streams a lot i am addicted when i am doing some work where i need to concentrate when i'm falling asleep when i'm hurt i go to ruby's streams because she runs reruns 24 7 so you know like it's the thing that you can always go to when you need some relaxation and ruby was just sitting there talking about it and i just feel myself kind of like automatically dozing off and i'm like okay i need to stay awake it's it's true (laughs) it's true how it works when you used to fall asleep to someone's voice you need to you need to make sure i don't doze off during this interview because it's, it's true it's working surprising how that works it's um, my loud voice <laughs> i feel like i feel like not many people um heard your loud voice i feel like a lot of people are used to hearing you uh whisper a lot that brings me to a question about whispering because you do use headphones or monitors right during your asmr stream because you do want to hear what's happening and what people hear does it feel weird hearing your own whisper all of those tinkly effects that you're using during the stream as well yeah so I started doing ASMR like I'd say probably three years ago now and it was just with like my yeti and just experimenting and as you know you can pop your headphone jack into the yeti and monitor yourself and it was like turning the gain up it's it's like having a superpower all of a sudden you can hear so much and you're sat there and you're like, whoa. And you suddenly get really aware of every inflection in your voice and every like thing that you do. And then like you'll get, um, most people get a binaural mic, which you can see. Mm-hmm. I've got my little binaural mic hanging out here with his ears. That's another reason people think find it really weird is because these mics have ears. ears. And a lot yep. of people use these mics because they capture, they're made for field recording and they capture sound as you hear it. Um, and now I prefer to use two road mics just because I like the quality of the sound from my two road mics. But yeah, it's like having a superpower and you just suddenly hear yourself and you're really aware of every inflection and every movement. And I got really paranoid about that at one point while streaming, <laughs> like especially as I got better mics, I'll be mm-hmm. like, <gasps> don't move. And now I'm like, chill. It's like, Mm -hmm. it's all part of the ASMR is the sound of you moving, the sound of you getting something, the sound of you doing something. You were not always an ASMR streamer on Twitch. I remember the time when you were playing uh, video games and uh, how did this transition happen? Uh, Was it smooth? Was it rough? Did you have doubts about it? It was pretty smooth, um, weirdly enough. Um, ASMR didn't exist on Twitch when I started. It did, I think there was like one or two people doing it. Um, I didn't know they were doing it though, because obviously one or two people and you're not interested in it, you don't find it. So um, I was playing The Sims a lot and I was really chilled playing The Sims. Like my stream used to go between playing Dead by Daylight and horror games and Friday, Friday the 13th. It's so funny if you look at like my most played games on my channel, it's like Friday the 13th and then Dead by Daylight. And there's like all these horror games and stuff, which I still absolutely love watching. Mm-hmm. Um, and I need to get some time in my life to play them again. Um, and The Sims, I just love Sims and um, like Planet Coaster and Subnautica and games like that. Um, so I was playing The Sims and people started like, I noticed my chat was getting quieter and quieter, but the views were okay. And I was like, you know how as a streamer, you get really worried about that. You're mm-hmm. like, where's everyone? What's happening? Yeah, I'm just sat here. It was fine. I just chatted to my Sims, you know, I just carried on with their lives. So I was like, fine. But people started explaining to me that they were using my stream as ASMR because I was like, getting really like chilled in my seat, bringing my mic really close to me and just like playing The Sims. And they were like, Ruby, have you ever thought of doing ASMR? And I was like, not really. I'm not really sure what it is. I know what it is. I thought it was that weird thing. See, before I did it, I thought it was that weird thing. So when people come in and they say, oh, this is weird. I'm like, I know. It's quite weird, isn't it? <laughs> like, take a seat, <laughs> put your headphones on. Um, <laughs> So yeah, people sort of started saying I should do ASMR. And at the end of a stream, and I started watching ASMR as well at that point, when people started saying it, I started watching it and I was like, whoa, actually, now I've found the stuff I like, Mm -hmm. I like it. Like, and I was like, yeah, I get tingles and I can understand these role plays. And now I found all the things that I like. Mm -hmm. I think that's 
I describe ASMR artists as like musicians. You're not going to like all of them. It's a very good and comparison. That's fine. Find yourself somewhere comfortable to relax. And I just invite you to become aware of your natural breath. Yeah, you're not gonna like all music, so you're not gonna like all ASMR. So if you heard something once and you hated it, mm -hmm. then still give someone else like a chance like some people some ASMR annoys me I can like, I can speak from my own experience as a person who I was introduced to ASMR uh by I, I want to say by you but I think with you I started watching it a lot and got addicted to it but I was introduced to it by a lady on YouTube uh Gentle Whispers I think her channel is called she was I think I'm on like the very first has, yeah. people who started voice. doing that yeah and the fact that she also like you know she speaks Russian together then with English and then she did uh she does videos in both languages um I found out that some her videos in Russian tingled me more than her videos in English, which was weird because it's the same person and the same voice. And then with you, I started looking up in the category, especially since we got the ASMR category. And what Ruby said, some people just not your cup of tea. Some ASMR artists, they you just don't vibe with them and that's okay. It doesn't mean that ASMR is not per se. Yeah, it's just, it, that's okay. Like, and there's different styles of ASMR. Like there's fast ASMR, there's aggressive ASMR, there's gentle ASMR. Aggressive there's ASMR, like, what would that be? Like faster <laughs> and closer to the mic okay. and really like- Okay, got it, got it. Intense, mm -hmm. like, um, I'm really into like stuff like people just playing with beads <laughs> <laughs> and like whispering. Just like whispering and mm -hmm. fluffy mics and like just like warm kind of sounds. It's a hard thing to say to someone warm sounds, but like warm sounds and you get crisp sounds and then you get like, so it is like music and you will find like the people don't annoy me. It'll be the sound that annoys me, you know, <laughs> um, and I respect that artist's style because people obviously love them and that's why they're doing it, you know, mm -hmm. and people yeah. love them and probably hate me and it's vice versa it's um it's just like music I think and uh so yeah I started whispering into my yeti and then I took me a year to save like you know what it's like new partner yeah. on twitch <laughs> you're like yeah. yeah it took me like a year to save for a decent mic and it was something I really wanted to do and like you know when your heart's like aching to do something and you just mm -hmm. can't afford the like one, I wish I had more confidence in myself to just keep doing it with my Yeti mm -hmm. because now I look and I'm like, that is a perfectly good mic. Mm -hmm. But I, I have like, I had this like lack of confidence in myself, but I guess I spent a year like researching and watching and, and practicing and playing before I kind of went, okay, this is my content now. So I kept doing it at the end of streams. Mm -hmm. I kept being like, oh, I'll pop on for a few hours and do some ASMR. So it, it kind of like blended into my content until I went, mm, this is mostly my content now. I still do non-ASMR streams mm -hmm. uh, every now and then. Um, and I've delved into a little bit of sound therapy stuff. Um, so, yeah. You spoke about saving up for a mic, yeah, for a year. Uh, now watching you evolve, you have so much tech because you obviously kept your binaural mic and now you're using two road mics and you uh, obviously have uh, uh, mixers as well because of like, you know, the looping sounds and whatnot. How pricey is all of the tech that you're using for your ASMR streams? Um, Pretty expensive, but like I've hit a point where I don't need anything more and I never needed any of them. Like this is to all streamers out there. Mm -hmm. You do not need <laughs> more things. They are not going to make you a better streamer. Like, <laughs> you know, yeah. I, but we all feel it as well. And it's like, if you're feeling a bit like, oh, you know, I really wish I had that and mm -hmm. really wish I had this. And it's like, at the end of the day, people come for you. Um, but yeah, I started out with a guitar loop pedal, like an old crappy guitar loop pedal, because I had this idea of 
filling the background sound because I felt like being live with just mm -hmm. a mic felt very, for me, uh, intimidating. I constantly had to be doing something. So if I could make loop sounds on a, a pedal, guitar pedal, then it was quite nice because I could have some layers of sounds going on and I could then feel like I could breathe kind of in between. <laughs> um, and I used that for like a year and that was just um, an old guitar pedal that was my, my husband's um, until I saved up for a really nice loop station. Um, and my new road mics, I've got four road mics. Um, I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I probably spent... <laughs> probably two thousand pounds on mics i love them i mean and i'm gonna use them to death like exactly i mean in the end of the day the quality of your streams the sound quality because i feel like when you do asmr sound quality plays a very huge role in what you're doing yours has always been top notch i mean you kind of always managed to pull the best out of it whether using the yeti mic the old pedal or the good expensive you know mics that you're using right now I think um, there's so many different, like like we're saying, different types of ASMR. You can get lo-fi ASMR. There's people doing great ASMR on like really like interesting setups and little mics and things. Um, I think it's just personal taste, you know. I I could hear every buzz and every sound, so I just kept getting like more and more obsessed with like microphones and things. And now I'm like Ruby, stop. <laughs> the mixing desk is actually the cheapest thing you know it's like a couple of hundred quid mm -hmm. but yeah it's like ruby stop you have mics you have everything you need mm -hmm. now you just need to put you know your effort into your content and your community and um yeah yeah um obviously we have all sorts of communities on twitch right we have gaming communities people who play you know similar games we have variety community and we now have the asmr community um how would you describe the asmr community what are people like is there any rivalry going on do you guys know each other do you support each other this is so far away from what i'm doing that i'm quite curious how do you guys get along um, it's fairly similar to every other community that I've ever spent time in on Twitch. Um, you know, when I played a lot of Sims and stuff, you kind of get to know the people in the category. Um, yeah, I think time zones comes into a big thing on the ASMR community as well, because obviously a lot of us run reruns. Mm -hmm. We know we know people exist, we <laughs> never get to see them live. <laughs> and it's like, I might have spent like some time hanging out in a rerun of someone's stream and been mm -hmm. like, oh, they seem really nice but they stream at like 4 a.m. my time. And then right. sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm like, they're alive. No, don't type in the chat. <laughs> Go back to sleep. Like, it's like... <laughs> um, but generally, yeah, we all get on pretty well. There's a few of us that were like... I would say there's three or four or five of us that were all like the first people to like hop in the category. It was really interesting. I think ASMR is probably one of the first categories in a long time that twitch has made new out of irl that has held its own mm -hmm. and stayed and has you know always sitting there with people streaming um you know because i used to do and i still do now and then some body painting mm -hmm. and stuff um but that body painting category you can be the only person in it so for discoverability that's mm -hmm. like but you really want that to grow, so you want to stream in it, but there's nobody else in it, so it's mm -hmm. really hard. But with ASMR, everyone was so happy to have their own space because streaming ASMR in IRL was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it was an interesting time. Yeah, I spent like a year or so just streaming ASMR in the IRL category, and you you get some very interesting kind of points of view it's that. very true you get all sorts of people now people i'm happy that we do have this separate asmr category because people can now literally come to asmr and it's easier for people to discover asmr streamers this way instead of browsing through pages of irl and pages and pages and yeah. pages looking for you know the right content creator for them um do you listen to your own ASMR outside of, you know, streams and YouTube and, you know, you don't? So I guess you no. listen to someone else's? Yeah, I like the only time I've accidentally listened to my own, and this mm -hmm. is going to sound really weird. I listen to it obviously when I edit um, and obviously when I check stream back or whatever. Um, 
but the only time I accidentally listened to my own, my mum had one of my reruns on uh-huh. for some reason on her iPad. And I went round her house and I was sitting there and I was like, oh, that sounds nice. Where is, what is that that mum's watching? Where is it coming from? And I was like, oh, it's me, it's my rerun. <laughs> and it was just me like tapping and like mm-hmm. some chimes and stuff. But I was like, well, that sounds nice. What is that on mum's like iPad? <laughs> That's the only time I've accidentally gone, oh, my ASMR's all right, without knowing it was my ASMR. Um, I describe it to people a bit like, because people always ask if I can give myself ASMR reaction. Mm-hmm. I'm like, it's a bit like trying to tickle yourself, that, you know? It's true, never works. Yeah, it just never <laughs> works. And also, like, I think most content creators are the same. Like, we don't love staring at ourselves as much as people would think the opposite Mm -hmm. you've become so passive to a camera and you become so passive to making something and putting it online because it's become part of your job like every day and as much as people think they must love themselves because they're constantly (laughs) looking at themselves and sharing themselves and talking about themselves I'm like you know what I'm pretty sick of myself sometimes and it's like (laughs) even editing myself I'll be like ooh what's that face like, <laughs> it is it is definitely tough editing the videos when you actually have to look at yourself and things that you do is probably and the listen. worst and oh and you actually have to listen do you have a favorite ASMR artist your go-to ASMR artist um I don't necessarily have a go-to um I go between a few different and I like I feel like it depends what mood I'm in as well um so like Frivy Fox she's like really good for my anxiety I don't know what she does she's just really good for my anxiety uh GB she's like amazing for like inspiration and just feeling good um and there's a guy called PJ Dreams. These are mostly YouTubers. Mm-hmm. I'm really bad at watching ASMR on Twitch. I know I should, <laughs> but like once I finish my stream, mm-hmm. I don't know if you feel the same. You're like close everything. Uh-huh. <laughs> same. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. Close everything. Get away from the PC. Kind of like you know, shower, yeah. food. Yeah, yeah. Kind of and then stuff. like maybe you'll come back onto your PC later, but maybe, especially when it's hot at the moment. Um, but yeah, a guy called PJ Dreams, ASMR Zeitgeist makes these most amazing like soundscape long videos. And the production quality is so different in all of these creators as well. And I appreciate that because it's um it goes along with their personality. None of them are trying to be anyone else or you know, it's um nice chill time. There's just so many people out there making so much ASMR I couldn't really list them off I just like to browse through and see what catches my eye but on Twitch trying to think on Twitch Mary is one of my good friends over on Twitch Mary J Lee we were like two of the first people to be like you do ASMR too oh my god (laughs) me too let's be friends did we just become best friends (laughs) (laughs) so yeah Mary she's really like good for just chill sounds like background sounds um but yeah there's so many creators now on there so many the guys are coming up as well I'm so happy for that like there's some guys on there that are doing amazing um guy called Tremi IRL he just got partnered I was really happy for him because I think the misconception is it's like it's a girl thing I only watch girls because it's a sex thing and it's like no most of those yeah just zeitgeist and pj dreams they're both guys mm-hmm. like like male ASMR artists are so I think they're really underestimated but when they click and people find them mm-hmm. then they then they can like grow because they're like finding them is like to some people like that needle in the haystack oh my god this is male asmr artist that i i love you have mentioned that you also used to do body painting right uh on stream Mm -hmm. as well um the things that you would body paint they were mind-blowingly good uh i am impressed with every single one of them how stressful was it because i know that body painting has quite i don't want to say a reputation but people treat it like it does especially on twitch and um why why did you stop doing that um 
I have a couple of reasons for not doing it so often. I do it when I feel like it. Um, and when I really want to, um, my, I think I did like four last year. I've done one this year. Um, I absolutely loved it when I found it. And like, I was trying to do a body paint every weekend. And I think this was back before as well when Twitch just had the IRL category and there was nowhere to really go. Um, and body paint, you try in the art section and, you know, um, and there just was a bit of a toxic mentality around it. I think, I don't know, from what I've seen now, that toxic mentality has calmed down and a lot of people are appreciating the beauty community and the, the creative community um, and body painting community a lot more. Um, it's so sad because body art is such a legitimate art form and there's like body painting festivals around the world and like TV programs. And sadly, it's that Twitch, like not everyone on Twitch, but Sadly, there's a Twitch toxic mentality um, towards anything like that. I have a good friend that's male that body paints. And he was like, hello. <laughs> like, <laughs> literally, he would like, I would spend my time like promoing him because he was amazing. Mm -hmm. And I didn't feel like I should just be getting that attention just because I'm female. Mm -hmm. And he's doing exactly the same thing. But I think... Unfortunately, all the internet ever proves to me is whenever I feel like we've gone forward in time, like there's people still there that are like backwards in time. Or I think that just people just enjoy upsetting people. It's a place to extra troll. You know what I it's, mean? It's a yeah. place to be an extra asshole. It's a yeah. place to be that person on Twitter. It's just an excuse, you know? Um, and yeah, I love body painting, but also, so A, very long days like 13 hour days to mm -hmm. body paint mm -hmm. that's um, insane and never wow it takes forever wow. yeah so before you start stream you'll do all the prep mm -hmm. and i'll probably would start that like 10 a.m before mm -hmm. a 2 p.m stream so you had already started at 10 a.m and got yourself half done before starting stream at like two or something mm -hmm. and then you'll finish at like the amount of times i've like finished at like 10 11 p.m and I've literally just been like lying in my hallway in pain. It's like, <laughs> got to take pictures. Um, <laughs> that is crazy. That is such hard work that I never really, truly, I think, thought about because you were doing, yeah. you're, you're moving and you're actively painting things on your body. And I think that's why it's so upsetting to so many like body painters mm -hmm. is because A, paints cost hundreds of pounds, mm -hmm. B, painting takes hours and see it's quite a vulnerable position to put yourself in painting on yourself so you're already like okay I really want to do this painting so my first thoughts would be I really want to do this painting make mm -hmm. myself look like this that would be really cool I can take pictures like this then my mind would go backwards towards the oh but I've, but it's stream oh I feel really vulnerable oh you know what I mean like everyone would think your first thoughts are hey, I'm a girl, I'm going to go and like body paint because mm -hmm. it's going to get me views and I'm going to be naked on the internet and that's really cool. They're not naked. But, you know, that's what people's first thought is. But my first thought would be like, I just want to make this badass thing. Mm -hmm. And it's a shame because people just think that you're just trying to hack the system and get on <sighs> Twitch with your no clothes on and get your viewers and take all their viewers. And yeah, yeah, it's rubbish. <laughs> And then the second reason I stopped was, or cut down, I do mm -hmm. it when I want, is because um, I have chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, I have arthritis, and I have like a really crappy back, which I've just been to the chiropractor for. Um, so I'd be in, when I say tired, mm -hmm. I would be in agony by the end of painting. Like sometimes I would just, just be at the point of agony. So it's like, is this thing that I enjoy mm -hmm. really worth the pain, the tiredness, and there's one thing painting, and then there's another thing painting and dealing with like chat, mm -hmm. you know. True. Um, and back then, like I had some 4chan raids, I had like just so much crap, and I was just like, just wanted to paint something cool, 
<laughs> right people don't yeah. make it easy on you what's already <laughs> difficult people definitely do not make it easy but i do appreciate all of your pains that you did before and uh, you do have a slideshow of them uh, uh sometimes like when you did the body pain you would have the slideshow running of your previous works and i would always be like oh that is that is so cool so yeah i understand why you would not do that that often but really appreciate all of the things that you did beforehand you've been doing uh we've been talking about twitch but you've been also been doing youtube for quite a while now right because you've been uh recording videos for the asmr videos for youtube as well um which one can you say you enjoy more live streaming on Twitch or recording videos for YouTube? Um, they're both very, very different. I've only really like delved into my YouTube, I'd say in this past year and a half, like tried to be more regular and think about the content I'm making. And I realized like I had, I think a lot of people were like this. I was just doing minimal effort and I realized I had actually more potential and I could do more and I could make more for YouTube. So I started to give that a go and I saw the payoff, you know, and so I, it's worth like sticking and making YouTube content because that payoff comes up not only to YouTube, but it comes over to Twitch and everything grows. Um, they're very, very different. Sometimes I'm like, I am loving making this YouTube content because I can be in my own little bubble, I can create all these things, I can record this stuff, and then I can sit here and I can edit it. And this is gonna sound so harsh, I didn't have to talk to anyone all day. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> and then <laughs> I just can't relate to this, you know? <laughs> I just can't relate to this so much. <laughs> and then other days I'm like, just when I'm like today is meant to be my YouTube recording day but I'm ahead on recording YouTube content and because I have like patches of inspiration I've started to learn this like I have mm -hmm. patches of inspiration and when you're making like YouTube content on your own you need to be inspired because if you make something just because you have to make a video then it's not gonna really be your best work so I've learned that I have like these bursts of like inspiration so like a couple of weeks ago I was making three videos a day wow because I was like wow. yeah I was just like into like not every day but three videos a day on my recording day a mm -hmm. week so like in two weeks I made six videos because I was inspired and I felt like I knew what I wanted to do and I had lots of ideas but today I'm meant to be recording and I'm like <laughs> I don't really feel inspired. I don't have anything to do. Um, I'm pretty tired. I get into like manic work modes. I don't know if that's just a creator thing or just a me thing, but I will flat out work like seven days a week for like a month. And then suddenly I'll be like, I'm really tired. I wonder yeah. why I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I'm going to read my book this afternoon and chill, I think. That sounds fantastic. That <laughs> it really does. Um, you have spoken about the role play things that you're also doing because you've been doing them both for YouTube videos and for your live streams on Twitch. You have done the Viking Shield Maiden, the Dragon Ruby, the Vampire Ruby, the Android Technician Ruby, the Elf Ruby, so many. And everything seems nice and clean through that. And uh, I will be evaluating which sounds you have uh, chosen during your ear cleaning today in just a minute. Grisel, thank you so much for using your prime for five months and supporting me here in the future spa. Today, every point goal that we hit, you will be voting on how this visit to the spa proceeds where do you get the ideas uh to to create all of those things um i'm not sure so the viking video do you want to hear like the one that really kicked off on youtube wow it's got wow. demonetized thanks oh. youtube it wasn't demonetized last week wow they keep going through my videos and demonetizing so them so that's the thing that yeah. i've been doing lately with your videos which is not good I'm trying not to take it too personally, but um, <laughs> it's difficult sometimes, right? Yeah, like I speak to male ASMR artists and they don't understand. They don't get demonetized. 
It's literally me pretending to be a Viking woman in my spare bedroom, washing someone's face and seeing if they're okay. Like, <laughs> too sexual, can't have it monetized. Bye, you know. I have one the other day that was like, this has been manually reviewed. Someone watched it mm -hmm. and someone told them, mm -hmm. like, this has been manually reviewed. Um, this can't be monetized due to genitalia or blurred genitalia. It's an ear cleaning video. There's no ears on it, though. So if you're going to class ears with genitalia. <laughs> you can just see about this much of me, like, going up to the camera and cleaning ears. But my hands blurred genitalia? I don't, I don't know. Like... <laughs> That is, that is, that is something that YouTube definitely needs to work on because that is, I, I, I don't, I don't know what to say. It's just so ridiculous to me. It's just so ridiculous I've to me. I've given up making money on YouTube. I could have, I think, hundreds of thousands of views and it would still not be an income. Um, people's idea of a YouTuber, they'd think that you had a great income from like videos with hundreds of thousands of views and you're like, no, made me 80 quid or something. So I only make them because I enjoy it. There's a community there that enjoys it. Mm -hmm. I like making content for them. But that video that got like 300 and something mm -hmm. thousand views, mm -hmm. um, I made it on a whim. I was finished recording for the day and I hadn't felt inspired. But then I suddenly felt inspired to do this. Like I was like, oh, I have this idea to do this Viking thing. And um, I just did it quickly. I just put the rug off my floor around my shoulders and put some makeup on. In. You look like you've seen some things. <sighs> come in, come in. Get warm by the fireside. Come in, come in. And then it's got 300 and something. <laughs> and that proves to me you can like spend all the money you want on like things, but pick the rug up off your floor and put some makeup on to pretend to be a Viking woman, and then like it just <laughs> blows up it... the internet. <laughs> yeah, I literally went to bed with nine thousand subscribers and woke up with like nearly twenty thousand. I was like. Wow. <laughs> what happened on YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> and YouTube like, we really love that rug. There, you're recommended to everyone in the world now. <laughs> well, that's the crazy thing. They recommended that and it was on like the recommendeds mm -hmm. like a few weeks ago and now it's been demonetized. This is weird. Uh, do you as a YouTube creator, can you like fight? Can can you ask them once. to? You can ask once and mm -hmm. if they come back saying no, that's it. That's your choice. If whoever watched it decides that it's sexual or whatever, mm -hmm. like then that's your choice, their choice and that's it. So like my ear cleaning video that's come back saying I've got blurred genitalia in it. That's, that's the answer. That's the only answer I get. I don't get to fight it anymore. So that's it. You could, that is, I, I, I don't know. Again, speechless, really speechless, not, you know saying anything judge by yourself dear audience judge but judge by yourself all i'm saying is the male asmr artists i've chatted to don't have this problem one of them was even laughing that he made this whole halloween video with a pov of pulling people's guts out and it's monetized do you oh. know what it just makes me think just be fucking Sorry, I'm swearing. <laughs> you me... can say the F word, it's fine. You go ahead and say it. It just makes me think, just be sexy and you might as well like gain the views from it and like just just do whatever because you know it's gonna it's to... gonna get thrown down the YouTube demonetization bin anyway, do you know apparently. What? A couple of videos I thought, oh YouTube might not like this, like the dragon one. I was like, mm -hmm. oh YouTube might not like this. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's monetized. They have a weird taste, is what I'm gonna say. They have a they really. They don't like me checking on people, but I'm fine to dance around. Like, <laughs> I thought that might be like, oh, maybe it's a bit too sexy because she's dancing. Mm -hmm. um, but no, that's fine. 
All right. That's just how YouTube is. I was checking, um, you know, the things that you do before the interview. I was trying to get ready, you know, kind of like, you know, see it and into what you do. Uh, and I've checked your link tree uh, that's linked to your Twitter. And you do so much, right? There is obviously Twitch. There is YouTube. Uh, there is Patreon, right? There is Spotify. Uh, you're that person with so many things happening. Where do you find time for all of it? How? Um just keep going <laughs> like, <laughs> okay <laughs> good question just i mean good answer. going <laughs> like yeah um i think a schedule i think anyone who wants to create content like it took me a while but a schedule and not being too harsh on yourself when like you don't feel that you can do stuff but be aware if you're like being too lenient on yourself as well i think of it like would i call in sick to work today or did I do enough and like is there enough done I've got everything covered cool I can have this day to relax because like I said sometimes I'll go seven days a week it's so funny because like sometimes people on stream are like how was your day off and I'm like I was up till 1 a.m editing and rendering videos it was lovely thanks <laughs> <laughs> you're like but it's just like yeah just keep I just keep going and when you've got like that drive to do something I just keep going and try not to burn out and be like okay woman you're doing great like you need to have a little chat with yourself because sometimes that can become like a real negative thing like when you stop I don't know if you get this but when I stop I sometimes like start getting annoyed with myself and being like I'm not doing anything mm -hmm. I'm not doing anything for Twitch I'm not doing anything for YouTube I'm not doing anything what am I doing I'm not doing anything and then that leads to like anxiety and guilt and then like the guilt of not doing something productive is really hard. And I'm just trying to get rid of that myself and actually have like some down time. The worst thing that I think can happen with a content creator is the burnout when you just cannot, no matter how much you want to, you just physically and mentally cannot produce the content, which is rough. So yeah. guys, please slow down. <laughs> <laughs> slow yeah. down you're gonna be more creative you're gonna have more ideas when like it's like the saying you can't see the forest through the trees so when you're like put constantly at your computer and looking at everything you're like this with everything on top of you but if you step back and you look through everything you like start to get ideas and get creative within like yourself and you see things for what they actually are and like watching a lot of other creators like um, Devin Nash, he talks about a lot of like Twitch topics and stuff. And mm -hmm. just hearing other creators say like three to four hours of a quality stream a day, mm -hmm. depending on your content, like four to five times a week, three, four or five times a week. I think he said something like that, but he definitely said the three to four hours mm -hmm. is like his limit. Mm -hmm. He's like, if you've got quality content and you're on schedule mm -hmm. at the same times, for those three to four hours then you're good style of twitch like if you're not streaming eight hours a day mm -hmm. if you're not streaming a 12 hour day you're not mm -hmm. a real twitch streamer like mm -hmm. but the thing is the people that are streaming that long a are like veterans of games that are grindy type games that they mm -hmm. can go over and over and over and b they've already like got the audience and they probably got someone whilst they're streaming taking clips and making their youtube video that's going to go up like that night mm -hmm. and someone running their twitter and someone you know they've reached a level like where they can manage and do all of those things and you know you're only one person um, yeah <laughs> and you can't do everything sometimes i wish i was stern people <laughs> and no, then I, I and, really and one of me would be like doing nothing all day every day while none of me is working <laughs> and that one lucky one would be like oh i'm good <laughs> life is good yeah one would be reading books one would be like doing the chores and yeah. the other one would be doing the work yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um you have recently launched a new project uh that's called shield maiden right you've made a separate twitter account for that and uh that is something uh that i really want to talk about because i feel like it's also important to talk about those things that those things are okay and normal to do uh you've pretty much went back to your i don't want to say origins but you did go back to modeling thing that you used to do back 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 in the day and you've started an only fans account as well too <clears throat> 
OnlyFans now is quite famous for some not so good reputation people like hate on that a lot because platform pretty much got big because of people in the adult industry like adult 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 one um were you scared to make it happen was it an easy decision for you yeah i thought about it for such a long time um like i think coming into twitch from a modeling background where I never felt there was anything wrong with like taking pictures and expressing yourself and just like I first started getting into modeling back then just to create images and be like I love being experimental with how I look and so that was just like let's document it and work with people and be experimental with pictures um and to be honest with you like I barely ever made money back then like so many people think like oh instagram models like blah blah they make all this money like Mm -hmm. so many like girls i know just have the normal nine to five jobs in a little shop or something and (laughs) they'll have these big big instagrams you know um so i think OnlyFans and platforms like it are actually amazing because and they were a long time coming because people got so used to free content Mm -hmm. people got so used to um I know people use OnlyFans for things other than like modeling pictures. They use them for lifestyle. It's, yeah. it's starting to spread into other stuff. Yeah. Um, and my OnlyFans is more of a, um, this is my place to be creative. Mm-hmm. You will see a lot more pictures that I maybe won't post on social media. Um, mostly because I spend a lot of time on them and I work on them and I want to share them with people that want to appreciate um, that side of me and be respectful about it as well. Because the other thing is, um the way I found it works is you post stuff online in an open kind of market mm-hmm. world for free and you get crap. But yeah. The people that are actually paying and behind closed doors and those kind of websites are so respectful and appreciative and I appreciate them so much. And they're there for you and appreciate what you're doing. And um whatever your like level or type of content that you're making, mm-hmm. OnlyFans is a place where people can own themselves and own what they're making and put their price on it and I was really scared because um I'd gone through this whole thing with Twitch and Twitch has a really toxic mentality towards women well not yeah not the platform itself but yeah. users yes M- especially especially if they know that you've done some modeling you know you know yeah like any, people would always yeah. try and bring it up like it was an embarrassing thing for me yeah and I'd be like, if it was an embarrassing thing, I would have changed my name. Mm-hmm. And that's not why I've changed my name now. I've changed my <laughs> name now because I feel like I've, it's, I just wanted to create this alter ego and mm-hmm. move forward. And I also feel like enough people follow me on my Ruby True stuff that mm-hmm. if they want to follow over there, then they can. And I don't have to fill people's timelines up with both of everything, you know. Mm-hmm. But it's been amazing. The women in my community have been so supportive. Like, it's the sweetest thing. Like, women, yeah, people were like, oh, men, blah, blah, (laughs) just want to see women boobs. Like, (laughs) it's not all about that, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, I think, I'm thinking people, like, do you know how having a Patreon used to be, like, a a weird thing? And, like, now I have a Patreon for my ASMR stuff, and that's fine, accepted for me to say I have a Patreon. People don't automatically assume that it's, something something else. Explicit you know yeah and I think that OnlyFans is going to get to that point where people realize you know I had a few people join mm -hmm. that are probably disappointed (laughs) that everything's not just there for them (laughs) Um, but they can go somewhere else (laughs) the thing is with that I think you give people a choice because people do subscribe to you if they don't like what they see they just go you know and they go in peace and they don't see that anymore you don't see them and I am honestly I think well I'm very grateful that you did go with that 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 you follow like continued on that path because I feel like so many girls on Twitch and not just necessarily on Twitch they really want to start doing that no matter the cause right whether it's you know modeling some lifestyle some fitness techniques you know some yoga some of the things that they can teach people do but are just scared of the name only fans you know i feel like people are scared to say i have an only fans account because of of this weird uh 
reputation that people toxic people has given to it and uh, yeah. i think that is not a bad thing and i am very proud of you for pursuing your dreams and following who you are and you know continuing on this it's journey just... of you know your creativity and expressing yeah. yourself it's been really nice because it's so bizarre so when i was just modeling and just like not streaming mm -hmm. i felt like an object and so i wanted to start streaming to become a human mm -hmm. And now I've been streaming, I'm like, I felt like people didn't really know me and that there was this whole other side of me and I wasn't trying to hide it. And like, there's, yeah, it's like, you can be all the things. I think this is something that women are taught. You either have to be the good girl mm -hmm. or the, the bad girl. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you can be all the things. I am still a good person. I am still a nice person. I am still a kind person. I am still genuine. I'm still caring. I'm still doing ASMR for those reasons. And I can take some fucking kick-ass pictures and look like a fucking babe because that's awesome. And yes. I can do that as well. Yes. And I think a lot of girls um, and women are scared, you know, to what other people think. They, like, I worried. I, I've been there. I was mm -hmm. scared. Like, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not... Um, I'm not like the most confident person, even though people might think I am, but um, I have all these worries and thoughts. Oh, what will people think of me and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, but I know what I want to do. I know what I'm doing. I know what I want to do. I know what's behind that paywall. I would not be worried if someone leaked all of that mm -hmm. because there's nothing there that I did not want to do that I did just for money. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what it like comes down to. I think that probably like, I feel like an overprotective mum. Like I worry about some girls like starting up on OnlyFans and being coerced by people. Mm -hmm. If you want to model and you want to do something, pick your levels. Mm -hmm. So when you say levels, it's like whether you're happily doing just lingerie, mm -hmm. swimwear, implied, um, full frontal, which is where you don't have your leggies open, but you have some boobies. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> or if... You know, pick what you're happy with yeah. and if what's you and what feels true to you. And none of them are wrong um, as long as that's you're happy with it. And yeah. if someone was to take that picture and put it somewhere else, mm -hmm. like it wouldn't, you wouldn't cause you mental yeah. distress. If you're happy and that's your level. So pick your levels, start on OnlyFans, take over the world. <laughs> <laughs> that is so good. No one could have said it any better. <laughs> I really, yeah, I really but... do hope that it motivates someone. Well, not as in, okay, go ahead and just start it. But people who've wanted to do that, people yeah. who have wanted to do that. And it's not just for girls. It's honestly for everyone. If you're a guy and you want to do the same thing, if you want to take some really cool sexy pictures of yourself or, you know, videos and whatnot, you go ahead and do that because at the end of the day, it's just, you know, you and you decide what to do. All right, Ruby, unfortunately, my very final question for you, it's been a fantastic fantastic interview and I've had a lot of fun I feel like I've learned a lot from myself as well uh it's probably a tough question but you've been um you know but you've been doing ASMR sound therapy yoga where do you see yourself uh as a uh content creator and as a person who loves helping other people in five years from now Five years from now, I literally, I don't know, I'd like to be living somewhere different, mm -hmm. um, travel abroad. Right now with like how everything is, it's made me realize like more traveling. Um, I love streaming, but also I feel like it does very much tie you down. Mm -hmm. um, it's scary to go away for a week. So I would like to have a little bit more freedom um, and travel some more. Um, but yeah, doing the same thing, mm -hmm. but a little bit more but a little bit more freedom but you've said that you wanted to buy this you know streaming backpack for yourself maybe that purchase can That's, help yeah. you make That's both my thoughts. things come true you know so that you're not just tied to your room and your pc that sounds really wholesome i love this idea that sounds that sounds really good it sounds like something that you know makes you even a happier person in the end of the day that is very true ruby thank you so very much for joining me today i really do appreciate that it's been a quality conversations a conversation one well many on different topics <laughs> uh can i ask you to say the thing because the thing. I, I cannot let you go without the thing yeah
My name is Ruby True, and this is my favorite interview on The Citadel. Perfect. Thank you so very much. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so very much, guys, for watching. Bye.